as a leader or rather as a manager, you want to remove as much uncertainty from your processes as possible. You seek stable conditions, safety, productivity, trouble-free customers and a happy workforce or vice versa. Standardizing work is usually a good place to start. Why and how you standardize is the question we start to answer in this episode. Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenu from IMP. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. Why and how can standardizing work help managers achieve more stable conditions? Frederick Taylor, at the turn of the 20th century, is the most famous of the engineers that developed the concept of standardizing work. And it is the practice of setting, communicating, following and improving standards. The definition I prefer for a standard is the one crafted by Tracy Richardson. It is the best known documented method at a given moment that we all agree to be accountable to until we improve it together. Let's take it bit by bit. A documented method can be a written instruction or procedure, but it can also be a video, an animation, for example. Among other information, it describes the sequence to operate a process. At a given moment, means that a standard is never defined once and then frozen forever. Conditions evolve and so will the standard. That we all agree to be accountable to means that there is a commitment from all personnel to use the method in a prescribed way. The consequence for not following the agreed method needs to be anticipated and clearly communicated. Until we improve it together, two remarks here. One, at some point and for various possible reasons, a decision is made to change the standard. Two, modifying the standard is a collaboration with the members that operate the process. Without their contribution, you kill your employee's motivation. How good then will the standard be? How will they accept the new method if it is imposed onto them? What I like in the definition is that it is people-centered and shows that a standard is dynamic. The process of accepting to stick to the method and then to challenge it reveals the ongoing rhythm of continuous improvement. There is a saying that associates with that. If you want to break the rules, you have to know the rules. The first purpose of the standards is to train people in the best one way. Best one way. Training based on the standard is the fastest way to train people on how to do the work safely, conscientiously, correctly and quickly. How the job instruction is designed will go a long way to achieve this. For each step of the process, you will want to explain the what, the how, but also the reason why a step is performed in a particular way. I'll explain job instructions in another video. Another key reason for standardizing work is to create a reference point for what is correct and what is not. This helps not only identify early defects before they become problems, but even prevent them. The reason for the variation can then be addressed. For example, it is a process, machine or competence issue. So the benefit here is increased quality. It is also a baseline of operation from which improvement is possible. 
as the standard is applied, the process is smoother and productivity increases. A benefit of standard work for the managers is to free up time from micromanaging for more system and strategic related activities. The best known method is to follow the SDCA cycle. S stands for standardize. This is the collaborative and creative part where the standard is created and documented. At this stage, the standard is just a hypothesis, so we need to test it by doing. In the do step, people are trained and the standard is tested to operate the process several days or weeks. Then C is for check. Here, we get feedback with the facts. Two questions should be investigated. Did the members operating the process comply with the standard? And what was the quality of the results? It is important to investigate both compliance and results. The check step is not to judge if people are good or bad, but rather to learn as much as we can to improve the standard going forward. And that's the last step of the SDCA cycle. Act or adjust the standard. This means improving and training it and also to potentially let other interested departments use it. Yep. Standardized work is the practice of setting, communicating, following and improving standards. A standard is the best known documented method at a given moment that we all agree to be accountable to until we improve it together. When people willingly comply with the standard, we observe more stable process conditions, greater safety, quality, productivity, and reduced operator and management load. It is also a baseline for improvement. The best known approach to standardize is to follow the SDCA cycle. Standardize, do, check, and act or adjust. And this is the good quote for this episode. In the context of problems found with product or processes, a wise Japanese sensei said something like this. There are only three root causes to a problem. There isn't any standard in place. The standard is not being followed. The standard is obsolete. Isn't this beautiful? If you are one of the first three people able to name the person that I just quoted, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Just write the name in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at mp.solutions. Here is a clue. I think he was an engineer at Toyota in the past century. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to standardize work in your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead well.